everybody. Todd Midroth, Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well this Saturday. So, uh, if I were to say so myself, this is a good way to end August. While, yes, there is a little bit of severe weather on going towards the, the mid-Atlantic and parts of the Northeast. If we look at things overall, it's not too bad. The threat is mainly for damaging winds, and that threat is going to start to diminish in just a little bit here. We may still have to watch northern parts of the slight risk for the later part of the afternoon. But all in all, temperatures cooling down, college football for some of us, for those of us that are football fans. Let's uh, make it for a good end to the month. And speaking of which, with it being the end of the month, we of course now have a new outlook to look at here for September. This is the final outlook for us. And like I said before in the previous one that I did towards the middle of the month, still looks relatively identical a little bit more confidence towards maybe equal to cool than average temperatures out towards the eastern half of the u.s here so definitely holding on to that classic positive pna look with the emphasis on warmer temperatures being more so towards the four corners region and the rockies now especially over towards colorado wyoming utah arizona and new mexico so to speak but interesting to note now interesting thing to note is the fact that over towards the mid-Atlantic, we now have a 40 to 50% chance of below average temperatures here. We didn't see that on the last outlook, so interesting little change here. And we're gonna see a good show of that actually within the next six to 10 days here. We kind of talked about in a recent video, we're gonna be putting up another video tomorrow evening to talk about that as well. But definitely uh, starting to see a little bit more in the way of validity with this as we continue to go forward here this month might actually be pretty wacky uh september so we're going to be keeping an eye on that if we go ahead and take a look at the precipitation outlook we're still holding on to that trend of the northwest starting to get a little bit more active in the weather pattern here and then we're starting to get notably drier over here towards the northern states especially over towards the great lakes early it's kind of reminding me of earlier this year we were getting into a pretty notable drought over towards the Great Lakes. Then we started having these periods where we were getting strong to severe thunderstorms even over towards this area. Still can happen, but I think the storm track is going to start to shift south as we continue to go forward, and that pattern is going to kind of hold. So we're going to start to see an increase in precipitation over towards the southern states. Florida looks like they get into the action pretty notably, as well as Texas. We even have that 60 to 70% chance of above average precip. But as a whole here, we're going to we're going to have some pretty big wholesale changes once again, just like we previously had mentioned in the last video. Also, another area I always like to look at that gives me a good indicator of what's going on is Alaska. As far as the uh, precipitation is concerned towards the eastern part of the state, it's pretty active. So that's always a good indicator for the northwest getting more in the way of moisture. And then if you actually go back to the temperature outlook here. You can see I always look towards the western part of the state for this because usually we have some pretty big uh, shifts here. Normally, whenever the western part of the state gets into the below average temperatures here. And then also, whenever you see the warmer than average temperatures here, it's kind of an indicator that we might be dealing with a little bit of a flip-flop pattern. It's not anything that's necessarily proven. It's just more so a trend that I've seen over time. So definitely need to be watchful because while we're seeing this 60 to 70 percentile area over here towards the four corners the rockies looks could be deceiving this month and i'll show you why in just a minute here another wild card of course with the uh, above average chance of precipitation here is of course going to be the tropics it's very interesting how things can sometimes change so quickly about a few days earlier we had no chances of development towards the region here now we have three Really, I would narrow it down to two here because they're, they've lost confidence in this system forming up within the next seven days. I do think that that still could change if the system can make it out here. I just don't think it'll really hold together. Environment's a little bit hostile right now due to the Saharan dust. But either way, two systems to watch. This one, regardless of whether it develops, is going to bring extra moisture in to start out the month of September. We'll look at that a little bit later. Another reason why I have such high confidence that this will be a flip-flopping type of month, September will be in large part due to the oscillations here. A couple interesting things to note 
is one we have a negative NAO North Atlantic oscillation here and we have a negative AO which is an Arctic oscillation and you can see these little cold air masses that are following in behind the warm air masses here if we go forward to the following week look at how that shifts into a positive AO as we go forward and it allows some of that cold air to kind of seep out that's usually stored up here towards the top of the globe here in the North Pole so this is where this is the result we end up getting not a super strong cold air mass towards the southern and eastern parts of the US but that cold air does kind of sink down and then as we continue to go forward there's going to be another cold air mass that falls in right behind that it usually is what will happen when we get those uh, positive AOs then as time goes on we'll see that cold air mass move out and another one is set to take its place right towards the middle and getting into the end of the month and then we see maybe another one even as we start to even maybe look towards October so well like I said, definitely looks like we're going to be doing a lot of uh, flip-flopping here in regards to the climate. I do also think this will give uh, rise to chances for severe weather. So September could be a pretty busy month here. If we were to go ahead and see how that looks on our temperatures here as a whole here, week to week. This is what we're looking like as we go through the first week of September here. Now this is probably a very welcome sign for the middle parts of the US here. We've been dealing with temperatures that are nearing 100, 100 and teens even. So the fact that we're seeing cooler than average here, I'm pretty sure this is a welcome sight and notably cooler than average at that. We could be dealing with two degrees Celsius below average. So we could be almost looking at maybe 15 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit below average here. Still very warm out towards the west, as we mentioned before. This is definitely a classic positive PNA setup. But watch what happens next week, though. We start to see that cold air actually expand out to the east here. So we actually have the deep south in the action now. Cooler than average temperatures reigning supreme towards the central plains here. And even getting into the northeast now. We still got those above average temperatures out west. And that's going to be a trend for a good bit until we start to get towards the back end of the month here, just past the middle part. That's when we start seeing those above average temperatures starting to migrate out of the area or the significant above average temperatures here. It's still gonna be warmer than average, but not quite as uh, immense as what we were dealing with here. It's pretty much, you would call this a full on heat wave whenever you see the pinks and the uh, dark pink. And I'm not even sure what this color is. I almost would say you would call it brown here. But when you have 11 degrees plus Celsius, that's like 20, 30, some maybe even 40 degrees above average in Fahrenheit. So pretty significant there. But we're eventually due for a breakout west as well. And even though we start to shift back into above average temperatures, keep in mind, this is week to week. This isn't going to tell the full story. I'll show you another model in a minute that'll give you a better idea of what's going on there. And then as we even sneak into October here, you can see that there's still little pockets right here left over from those little um, cold shots that we could be getting as we continue to go through the month of September, even into October. So another thing we'll look at before we start to get into the day to day and keep in mind, this is still looking 30 days in advance. So this is going to be hard to kind of latch on to. It's very much prone to changing. So don't ride all of your hopes for the month on just this one forecast there'll be plenty of update videos to come along with this but as a whole here the first week deep south southern plains even the mid-atlantic here looking wetter than average here tropics are also wild card in that as well up north storm track is going to change a little bit so we're going to start to see more of a uh flashpoint over towards maybe the southern and central plains as well so if there's going to be severe weather to watch for i would mainly be watching there of course the ohio valley as well southeast pretty typical of the uh transitional point as we get into fall then as we go further along here start to dry out as a whole over the u.s a little bit and this is the part where the northwest starts getting to the action with the moisture a bit here we're about average over towards a large part of the west but as we go further along, we start to kind of level out as a whole over towards the U.S. all the way up until the start of October here. But notice if you look over towards the Northwest once again, 
we're starting to see an increase in probability of that above average precip once again. These are based off of our rainfall anomalies here. So that being said, if we go back, still kind of dry first couple of weeks. Then as we go further along, pattern starts to spice up for the region here. I wonder if the Pineapple Express might come into play a little bit later even. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. If you're in California, you hear me just say that you're probably freaking out. Don't, I would say not to do so, but I do think that there could be some indicators a little bit later down the line, but right now we're good. In any case though, let's get into the day to day here. So we can actually take a look at our storm track now, now that we're in range. This uh, version of the CFS, we can actually take a look at it all the way up to about 30 to 32 days in advance. Now, like I said, this is not something that I would use as a final forecast. This is just more so an outlook or a preview of what could happen. So here is the indicator that we're going to have that positive PNA. A lot of troughing going on out to the east and a lot of ridging going on to the west. The ridging is going to allow for that warm air to rise and go further up to the north. The troughing is where that cool air is going to start to win out on the battle here. And it's going to be at this point where we start to see the increased probability of severe weather, let's say more so over towards areas like, let's say Nebraska, Kansas, maybe even Oklahoma and Texas, a little further down the line here. Especially as we look towards the downslope of this ridge here, eventually that threat, I anticipate that to migrate to the east over towards the Ohio Valley in the southeast. And this is gonna pretty much be the dominant pattern. Now this feature in particular, I'm paying attention to very closely because I think this could be a big factor in our below average temperatures over here towards the east there there's not a lot of model agreements some are kind of leaning into a cutoff low like what we're seeing here where you see the jet stream here and then this little trough in this low pressure area just kind of goes away from the primary flow and, but this is going to be a big determining factor as to what we could see as we go through that first week and transition into the second week so we go beyond that point see more in the way of troughing out towards the east the ridge kind of shifts a little bit to the west and we're still going to end up being stuck with it for a while regardless but as we continue to go forward eventually we start to even see some troughing out towards the west eventually so at some point everyone over the over the uh, low 48 here is going to level out it's just more so a matter of when now this feature of course while I'm not going to hype this up because we're 672 hours out. That would be a big deal. Of course, this is very much prone to changing. In fact, I would almost anticipate it changing. But if that ends up being the case here, that could be a huge cooldown as we transition towards the end of the month here in September. So I do think there's going to be some big swings as we get towards the end of this upcoming month. But Right now, all I can say is that that is hearsay. But how does this reflect in our temperature anomalies here? So on this map, we can actually look at the temperatures in Fahrenheit here, and we can actually look day to day. So as we go into the first day, which will be tomorrow, you can already see those above. You can already see above and the below average temperatures. Below average temperatures are kind of taking over already over towards the southern plains and also the midwest and eventually watch what happens as we get towards the second we can start to see well below average temperatures over here towards texas 16 degrees fahrenheit below average for the second day of september here if that's not fall calling out to us i don't know what is it's a love letter from fall literally and then even the southeast gets into the action as we get later into this week and the thing is it's not some lingering little cold shot where we get a little teaser here. This kind of holds true for a bit. This is 9-11 right here, or 9-10, the evening of 9-10, heading into 9-11. Look at this. We're seeing Michigan, 18, southern Michigan at 18 degrees below average, almost 20 degrees below average near the Red River. And then towards the Carolinas here, towards the Appalachians, we're pretty close to 20 degrees below as well. And even though we see above average temperatures out towards the west, it's not like they're going to be incredibly insane. We're seeing only up to about maybe at most 20 degrees above average, which is still pretty extreme, but not quite the same picture that we were seeing with the temperature outlook we were looking at earlier in the video. So 
and then of course like i said before these cold temperatures are holding out throughout the month which is crazy to think about we'll be talking about like i said we're going to get go further in depth into what the next couple of weeks could look like but like i said we're set to really cool down here gotta love the echo dot but in any case though with that big feature that we were looking at earlier you can actually see it in the bottom left corner here look at how dramatic of an effect that would have if that ends up verifying you can even see 30 degrees below average in mexico that's crazy but well like i said it doesn't quite ver i'm not sure if this will end up verifying but if it does oh my goodness but definitely something we're going to have to keep an extra close eye on as we go forward here so that's pretty much our general outlook here you can see with the precipitation pattern too pretty active out towards the east and this is of course towards the first half of the month it's really not until we get into the second half where we start to see the northwest get into the action a bit more we do still of course have to watch the tropics there's even a little tropical feature that we're watching off the shore right here at this point during mid-september this is during peak hurricane season so that's not uncommon the fact of the matter is eventually as we get towards the back half of the month we start to see a little bit in the way of a kind of leveling off here in regards to the active precipitation of course this isn't going to last because from the looks of it on the end of the month especially with, the, with that one crazy looking storm that we end up getting we could even maybe even we could even maybe see snow over towards colorado i don't know if i buy that yet but definitely something to keep an extra close eye on so could be a pretty topsy-turvy month as we get into september into october that's usually how the uh fall months can be very trans crazy uh, transitional periods here but that being said it's a little bit longer of an outlook a little bit more in depth i hope you enjoyed it found it useful if you did you know what to do make sure you smash that like button hit that subscribe button and especially hit that share button let's try to get these out to more people because this could catch some folks off guard i'm pretty sure it will especially these next couple of weeks but that being said you guys have an awesome rest of your saturday i'll see you guys in the morning some tired metal weatherman signing out for tonight